Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another edition of the Mickey Blog Podcast. I'm your host, Jared, alongside Alyssa Antonelli once again. Today, we are talking about going to Disney, believe it or not, because we are continuing our Disney for All series. But in this episode, as we continue our second episode in this series, we are talking about couples going to Disney. Um, we will be talking about couples not just going to Walt Disney World. Walt Disney World might be the focus, but this does correlate and relate to Disneyland, Disney Cruise Line, and other ways of tackling your Disney vacation. Of course, before I jump into all of that, I want to mention that this episode is brought to you by Mickey Travels. We'll talk more about Mickey Travels. But speaking of Mickey Travels, might as well ask the co-owner of Mickey Travels, how are you doing? Good. I'm just realizing it's episode 75. That seems like a significant number. It really is. It's uh, it's it's been a while. Uh, we we are still still doing this, which is awesome. So happy to see that. Um, it, it's it's really a joy to to have been able to do this for for as long as we have, and and um, have as many supporters continue to listen and watch and yeah. support the support the show. So well, that's uh, the big hopefully thing. we just thank everybody who's still hanging hanging in with us. I mean, who knows by episode one seventy five. You know, who knows who's still going to be around. Hopefully we have more, but you never know. But as we always say, if we reach one person and make one person's day happy or enlighten one person to something they didn't know that made their trip better, we're the winners. Exactly. I mean, and what a what a treat that we've been able to garner uh, tens of thousands of, of downloads, of listens, of views. Um, because that isn't just one person, and we're really grateful for that. That's a lot of people who've tuned in and watched or downloaded or listened um, dozens of five star reviews on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. I'm not saying all this, by the way, to like pat ourselves on the back. That's not why I'm saying this. I'm saying this because we're extremely grateful for that. Um, extremely grateful for all of you because none of that happens without you guys. And um, so we're just very grateful for the support and, and hopefully we can continue to, to keep bringing you guys some weekly magic with new episodes that drop every single Friday. So, well, it is a new episode. So let's get into this episode where today we are talking about couples going to Disney, Disney World, Disneyland, of course, Disney Cruise Line. I mean, Olani, great spot for couples, not going to lie, uh, did that for my honeymoon and 10 out of 10 recommend, but this is not an Olani episode. This is a Disney for Couples episode. In our first episode in the Disney for All series, we covered Disney for adults. So go check that out if you'd like to. We talked about how to tackle your Disney trip if you are going primarily with an entire group of adults, um, whether it's two adults or 10 adults, doesn't matter. Um, there's trips like that every single day. So go check out that episode if you need some tips and tricks for planning a Disney trip for adults. Today, let's dive into couples. You know, Alyssa, the dive in and the and the cruise puns don't work when we're not doing a Disney Cruise Line episode. I just realized that. Yeah, I know. How, what a like, bummer. Dive in. It's just people are like, wait, I thought you were done with your Disney Cruise Line series. It still applies, yeah. right? But I think that what um, you were certainly alluding to is, I guess people might say, well, didn't you kind of tackle couples because that's adults? I think this is more, tell me if I'm wrong, Jared, a little bit more um romantically based and things that are a little bit more um you know sort of not the hustle and bustle of the you know of the the craziness sort of like a little bit more you know um i don't know just things that i think a lot of people here's here's the thing um and jared you could tell me if you agree because you do a lot of couples things when it comes to disney um i think there's a misconception out there that disney's only for like little kids like small world and the carousel and you know oh like come on that's not a, you don't think of disney world or disneyland when you think of a romantic couples getaway but you should because there's a lot there mm -hmm. that we're going to share with you today would you agree with that yeah i would totally agree with that and yeah that's exactly what the focus of this episode is i was joking with Alyssa before we started the episode that we should have recorded this closer to valentine's mm -hmm. day um and frankly maybe we should have but regardless uh 
I really like this episode topic because I do think there is a misconception out there about, you know, being able to turn your Disney trip into a more romantic occasion. I mean, there's a reason why a significant amount of people celebrate honeymoons at Walt Disney World, celebrate anniversaries, celebrate, uh, you know, engagements. I got engaged at Walt Disney World. So there are obvious things that you can do during your Disney trip that are, of course, going to be romantic and, and things that most everybody knows about. But there's also some of the less obvious ones that we're going to talk about. Um, and some of the tips and tricks to make your Disney trip for couples a little bit more enjoyable. Um, some of our favorite spots to hang out that you're getting a lot of Disney magic, but it's more low key vibes. Um, a lot of those locations involve resorts, um, but they still can involve the parks as well. Um, and this is not a one size fits all. If you're the kind of couple that is going to Walt Disney World and you are going with your partner, but you want to do six straight days at the parks and you don't care about romantic dinners, you want to eat chicken tenders every day and go do it, go off, love that. Like, I'm not, I'm not saying that's not the way to go. Three podcasts. Absolutely. Look, I have my moments where I go to Disney with my wife and I'm like, look, we got to go on pirates. Like, I know I've been on it a thousand times, but we got to go. Like, <laughs> and then we're going to go with chicken nuggets and french fries. <laughs> so I, it's, I, it's all I'm good. practicing what I preach. You, Jared, this is a safe <laughs> place. Yeah. I look, full disclosure, Alyssa, just. <laughs> Just, I think it was maybe three weeks ago, my wife and I went to Epcot thinking we were going to have a nice low key night, grabbing a few drinks, enjoying the festival. And then we looked at the Disney app and we saw all the wait times at Magic Kingdom were like five minutes, like just insanely low crowds for a weekend. Um, and so we jumped over, went to Magic Kingdom, ran all over the park, did a bunch of rides, got Casey's Corner to end the night, ate like... Like it was not at all the nice, low key, romantic evening I thought, but it was, it was still enjoyable. Time. Exactly. So the point is, it's not a one size fits all with this kind of thing. We always say that on every episode. This is just our advice. Okay. So we're not saying this is the only way to do a couple's trip at Disney. This is just our advice. That's all. Well, and I want to say one other thing, Jared, just before we kind of jump into some of that advice. You know, we just said that the focus is going to be a little bit more romantically forward and, and things like that. Um, let's not forget, you know how I just said, oh, people don't think of Disney as the romantic getaway. But if you think about, all right, follow me along with this. All of the fairy tales, don't they end in a romantic sort of way? You know what I mean? Like think about all those fairy tales we all love, you know, all the princesses that find their prince. I know they have to go through some hardships and some villains. They got to get through some villains to get there. But at the end of the day, it is very romantic. Just what Disney is about. Um, I know that's a little, little stretching it a little bit, but you follow what I'm saying? No, I definitely follow what you're saying. I mean, nearly every Disney princess film has a, you know, happy ending. major love story involved. But happily with it. ever after. Exactly. I mean, dating back to Snow White and the first Disney animated film, I mean, that's she's getting her happily ever after. Of course, yep. classics like Cinderella and Beauty and the Beast. I mean, there's Disney's long had a. a exactly. Disney's always had a long, uh, you know, lasting focus on the topic of love um, mm -hmm. and, and couples and everything of that nature. So. Let's uh, let's jump into some of our specific advice when it comes to tackling a Disney trip with couples. Um, the first piece of advice that I would say, this is before we jump into real specifics, is figure out the vibe of your guys' trip. If you're on a double, triple, quadruple date, let's say this might that might fit more into our Disney for adults category. But if you are going, as we as I just said just earlier, if you're going with your if you two are 19, 20, 21, doing your first little solo Disney trip as a couple, um, you know, early 20s, mid 20s, late 20s, and you, you're not big drinkers, you want to go tackle the theme parks. Awesome. Okay, that's great. But just know that, figure that out beforehand. Um, along with that also comes with deciding, okay, 
Uh, what is your budget? What what kind of things do you want to enjoy? If you want to go on a couple's you know trip with your significant other, and you've realized, okay, I want to allot some money to do some special occasion stuff, then maybe you do take one or two days off from the park and enjoy more pool time or, or Disney Springs time in order to budget some of the cool experience things, because there are some very cool experiences that you can do, especially as a couple. So, so that's really first and foremost, but then let's say you, you got your idea of what you want your trip to be. You're celebrating your anniversary. You're celebrating, um, you know, whatever your first trip as a couple, a big move, a promotion, whatever it is. And you're going as a couple. Um, then let's talk about things you can do. But before we do that, we should talk about resorts because Alyssa brought up a great point before we started recording about how oftentimes, you know, when it comes to making a Disney trip romantic or turning your Disney trip romantic, there are very romantic-esque resorts at Walt Disney World. Um, and, you know, of course, this is going to apply to things like Disney Cruise Line, but also, um, you know, and Olani is 1000% romantic. In Disneyland, there are ways to stay over there and make it a little bit more adult friendly and romantic. So, Alyssa, do you want to talk a little bit about how couples can tackle that side of the coin? Let's say we do have a couple. Um, for this example, I'll say it's a couple in their 30s or 40s celebrating an anniversary, just the two of them. Like, how would you tackle um, planning a trip like that? What kind of recommendations would you suggest to them when it comes to where they should stay? First and foremost, they need to contact a Mickey Travels agent. <laughs> Duh, right? I mean, that's like exactly. the first step, right? You contact a Mickey Travels agent who's going to help you from the get-go. So that's number one. Um, number two goes back to what you said, Jared. Got to find your budget. Because you know, my first knee jerk is, oh, the Grand Floridian, of course. Um, that's not in everyone's, you know, budget or everyone's pocketbook. Um, so find out what's, you know, where your budget is. Now, here's the good news. You don't have to take the Grand Floridian to find that romance and to find that, you know, that perfect resort for, for couples. Now, do I think that the deluxe resorts exude a little bit more romance? Um, yes, but then... I'll be honest with you, look at the contemporary. I don't think there's, like, I don't think that is like a romantic resort. No, no offense. Exactly. And I, it's a great resort, but the Incredibles don't give me romantic vibes. No offense, yeah. you know. Um, but anyway, um, obviously the Grand Floridian is just, it oozes romance and, and just, you know, whimsy and, and just wow factor. Um, I will also say, I think another resort that is also, I, I do think the Polynesian can be extremely romantic. Um, we're kind of going back to what you said, Jared, about Alani. I think that there's a, obviously a connection between th those two. So the tiki torches and just the, the, the coziness and the warmness. I think that's great. But I can't also not say, I can't not mention Wilderness Lodge. I think the lodge is a very romantic place, as Animal Kingdom Lodge can be. It's just that warm, kind of by the fireplace. It just gives you like a big hug. Um, and I think that there's a lot of really neat, you know, factors there. Um, but let's go down a little bit in price point and let's look at Port Orleans, um, you know, French Quarter or Riverside. I think both of those can be extremely romantic on a, on a smaller budget. Um, I think there's something very romantic about both of those resorts. Um, I will say, and I don't say this, you know, we try to keep everything very positive, but if we're focusing on couples and romance, um, I do think that the value resorts can be a little busy. They can be a little loud. They're super fun. So when we talk about Jared, when we get to our Disney for families, we're going to go all in when it comes to the value resorts. Yeah, but we'll I think be talking a lot of art of animation, <laughs> right? Art of animation, the all stars. He, the kids yeah. love the big icons, right? I don't know if I would look at you know um, uh, a big pin, a uh, big bowling pin, and say, "Wow, let's get a romantic picture by the big bowling pin," <laughs> you know, at All Star Sports or something like that. Um, so, you know, I would probably say. 
if you were going to go value and you're trying to find the most romantic, I would probably say Pop Century, but I'm not sure I would call Pop Century a romantic resort. I guess of the, do you, Jared, am I, am I just going off on a really crazy, like, rabbit hole? <laughs> You know, a little bit, but it's okay. No, I would just say... <laughs> Help me out. Help me no, out. I, I mean, don't be a lifeline. No, I would say the one thing I will uh, agree with you in regards to Pop Century and even Art of Animation is, um, you know, for starters, you have the Skyliner there. And the Skyliner can bring you to a lot of very adult-friendly and romantic Good spots. Um, so that is a huge plus. But one important point I wanted to make is you can have a very romantic Disney trip, even if you're not staying at one of these extremely romantic Walt Disney World resorts, for example. Um, for my third anniversary of dating, this is you know, a while back. I'm I'm not that old, but regardless, I'm coming up on 10 years of being with my now wife. So at the time, it was three years. We were both still in college. We stayed at um, All Star Movies for a long weekend. Um, however, because we decided to stay at a value resort, we did some more fun and, you know, exciting things as a couple. Um, we're going to talk more about things to do in the second half of the episode, but, you know, that enabled us to be able to go have a really nice dinner over at Narcusi's. We went and did, uh, the Port Orleans Riverside, um, horse-drawn carriage, for example. Um, you know, and we even did a, uh, dessert party, firework dessert party as well, um, which we'll talk about some of that stuff too. So these are things that, um you know, you can consider. And beyond that, some of my favorite evenings that I ever have, uh, especially as a local, um, every once in a while I'll get in the mood and I'll be like, look, I really want to just go, you know, have a drink at Wilderness Lodge and walk around the resort. And that's something you can also enjoy. You know, if you're, if like, yes, Disney does typically want like Disney guests to park at their Walt Disney World resorts like but that doesn't mean you're like banned from there like if you have if you go make a dinner reservation at Grand Floridian you can go turn that into several hours of walking around of enjoying the beachside enjoying the water enjoying the electrical pageant you know whole water pageant parade at nighttime like these are things that you know you can enjoy so would you agree with that Alyssa in the sense where like there's so much you can still do, even if you're not staying at these resorts. Absolutely. Um, and like you said, you know, if you do it the right way and you make a dinner dinner reservation, you can definitely enjoy even, you know, a resort, what it has to offer if you're not staying there. Um, and I did want to say, I think that was a really good point that you mentioned about you and your wife going to an all-star, which is not romantically forward. But what I love about that is, is that you made the rest of your vacation together about the two of you. So really it was not resort focused for that particular trip. And rather you took that, you know, you, I'm sure being young at that time, there was a budget, right? I mean, yeah. it wasn't like this unending, you know, amount of, of money. That yeah, you had to spend. We were college kids. <laughs> That's right. So if you stayed at the Grand Floridian, which maybe you could have swung, you probably wouldn't have a lot left over to do the other things. You probably you wouldn't have, have done sitting it. in the room. <laughs> yeah, you'd be sitting in the room watching television, like, "Hey, honey, we spans on Ooh, tonight." Look yeah, at you this. Know, um, but you you wouldn't have been able probably to do the cruise, and you probably wouldn't have gone in our koozie. You would have had chicken nuggets and fries. Yeah. You know? So there is really, um, I I love that you're showing that it doesn't have to be like when they hear this and they think, "Oh, so it can only be romantic if I do the." highest end resort with the highest end dining and all the extras. Absolutely not. Um, but that's any Disney vacation. It's about priorities. If, hey, look, mm -hmm. if you have all the money in the world, if you win the Powerball tonight, and by the way, good luck to anybody listening, um, then it's all there for you. But most of us don't have endless pocketbooks, right? We do have a budget. Um, so it really does come down to what's important. And prioritizing. And I think that's a great example. I did want to say one other thing, Jared, before you moved into anything else. Um, when I was talking about the different resorts, the one other thing I did want to mention, because um, I was thinking about it, is as far as romantic 
sort of like venues. I did want to talk about the boardwalk because I do think the boardwalk is a very romantic resort, but it's located on a very romantic sort of area because I think the boardwalk is great for couples. You've got bars, you've got, you know, dueling piano bars, you've got abracadabra bar. Um, there's going to be other things opening up, which is going to be even more exciting, but there's something really romantic about just sitting. The boardwalk is beautiful. I mean, I think you would agree. Um, so having a resort right there um, and being part of the boardwalk, especially at night, I think the boardwalk at night is one of the most beautiful places. Um, I think I just wanted to, I wanted to mention that as well. And by the way, let me say this. You don't have to stay at the boardwalk to visit the actual boardwalk. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, uh, I wanted to name a, a few spots myself because I, I totally agree with the boardwalk point. Um, you know, the boardwalk to me is one of the more, not just romantic places at Disney, but adult friendly, um, laid back, just one of the best vibes you're going to escape. get. It's an escape. Yeah, it really is. I mean, I've had so many wonderful nights there. I, I've spoken about it on this podcast several times about how my wife's family has a very profound love for the boardwalk. So mm -hmm multiple different Disney vacations with them. We've done an Epcot day and walked right over to the boardwalk, uh, you know, just grabbed, grabbed a drink and sat right there, did some people watching, enjoyed the boats going back and forth. Like it's a, it's a very beautiful area. It really is. Um, another one I wanted to mention, maybe it's for sentimental reasons, but uh, Disney's Riviera resort um, I do think is very romantic. Um, it is a very classy adult friendly resort, but um, it's also the area you have the Skyliner that can take you right over to the boardwalk. You have the Skyline that you have that whole area where you can walk around Caribbean beach and enjoy some of Caribbean beaches, uh, restaurants and bars. Um, but also having Topolino's Terrace, uh, which is a fine dining, you know, restaurant with a rooftop, um, is, is a huge, huge bonus there. So, you know, well, there's, I think you're also, um, personally attached to Riviera. I don't in know a, what you're talking about. In a, in a, <laughs> for a very romantic reason, if you wanted to, I think our listeners have heard, but I think it's yeah. worth repeating. No, uh, so it's true. Um, I was engaged at Disney's Riviera Resort. Um, I proposed to my um, wife there, uh, and it was in 2021, so there were still some COVID protocols in place, but. It took a lot of planning. It took a lot of stuff to pull off, but was able to work. And Disney was amazing. Uh, their staff being able to work with me and my mom and planning it all. But um, and we, I, I had family fly in. Her family, my family, friends. She I thought, wasn't invited to that, by the way. I know. Look, I didn't know. Just want to like throw that out to our guests, <laughs> our listeners, and viewers, because I know they're all like, "Oh, listen, how they want to ask me how it was." Guys, I don't know. Jared did not include me in this event. So I just it's want to true. put it out there. Keep going, Jared. Talk about how great it was. Even though I didn't know Alyssa, I should have invited her. You um, really should. It, you should have seen what I was going to be now. My and, future. Yeah. But honestly, no. everybody, I have no idea. This could all be actually a lie. All it of could it. be. It, it could be. I don't even be. know if I truly believe it, but you can keep <laughs> going with the story. Uh, no. So one of the things that um, I really loved about the entire experience was how romantic it felt after the proposal because I proposed in the resort um, itself with all of her family and my family there, but we were able to enjoy a dinner at Topolino's Terrace. And after the dinner, you can still enjoy the terrace itself, go outside, have a few drinks, just like you could if you went to California Grill, another very romantic spot we'll talk about later. So that's just another resort I wanted to mention. And you know, in terms of moderates, I do think both Coronado Springs and um, Port Orleans, as Alyssa was mentioning, these are a, a step down on budget wise, but I do think you can absolutely find great, great couple experiences and enjoyment at both of those locations. I'm not saying you can't at Caribbean Beach. I just think Caribbean beach is going to be a little bit more family centric mm -hmm. kids and lots and it's of big groups. It is. It's very large. Where Port Orleans, I'm going to be honest with you. I agree with you, Alyssa. Port Orleans, with the boats right there, with beignets, with 
you know, the, it the, cozy. the it's moss. Like, it's like, it feels like cozy and warm. Yeah. And you just feel like, um, and, and again, maybe it's also their smaller resorts. Uh, I do agree with you. I think Coronado does have some areas that could definitely be construed as romantic. Uh, I also agree with you. Uh, sorry to our friends who love Caribbean beach, uh, a little big, not a place I would consider romantic. Um, but there is something about the the two Port Orleans resorts that are just very um, uh, intimate and uh, mm-hmm. and warm and and cozy. And like I said, to me, when I think of romantic, I think of things that are just a little bit. Um, they just, you know, they're just. I think of cozy, and I think of just you know, yeah. um, feeling well, good. What's great about Port Orleans too is you can enjoy both sides of it. I mean, if you're staying at Port Orleans Riverside, you can walk right over to Port Orleans French Quarter. Um, and that walk is pretty romantic and quiet and peaceful. It's right on the river. Um, it's just, it's a gorgeous area. I remember the first time I saw Port Orleans, I remember being like, what is this? But like, how did I not know about this place? I thought it blew me away that it was a moderate resort because it is, it's, it's a packs a punch for what it's offering. I will say. Um, yeah, so having said that, we're going to take our mid episode break and then transition into the second half of our episode. And in the second half of our episode, we're going to talk about actual things to do restaurants. You can enjoy um, experiences. You can book things like that. we just wanted to start off talking about places to stay. And again, this absolutely applies to Disneyland and Disney Cruise Line. If you're thinking about doing a Disneyland trip as a couple, you know, you can obviously budget accordingly and realize, okay, uh, if I want to stay in this beautiful Grand Californian room, uh, then great. It's just about your budget and where you stand. And if you do want to stay at a more value-centered room at Disneyland, then you can enjoy some of the finer dining and finer, you know, other offerings. It it absolutely applies out there. And for Disney Cruise Line, in my personal opinion, I don't think there's a better way to make your uh, Disney Cruise Line trip more romantic than enjoying one Palo, absolute must, have to go. I, uh, if I could have just been a betting woman that that was coming out of your mouth, I was said, I go in my mind, I go, Paulo, 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 Paulo. I agree with you. I mean, I'm I'm, la- I'm kind of joking, but um, I think that is the epitome of a romantic time on Disney Cruise Line, hands down. One hundred percent, one of the and most by romantic way, meals I ever. I also say real quick before we go to break, you also have a personal connection there because you celebrated a special anniversary exactly at yeah that that was our first wedding anniversary that we celebrated at Paul. wow and between this and uh honeymoon and olani um i'm really a great fit for this episode Alyssa. i've definitely you really are i'm thinking so. to myself i'm like you know jerry i'm gonna go you got the yeah. second half right <laughs> bye everyone i don't oh, you know come on yeah, you got I'm it sure. You know, Alyssa, I'm sure over the years you've experienced your own special occasions with uh, your husband, um, but also, um, you know, adult trips and things like that. I know you've spoken about um, being able to, in the adult episode, being able to experience like a little, you know, reunion trip with a lot of your uh, sorority sisters, stuff like that. But um, it's amazing. Sometimes we don't even realize like, oh, yeah, that's kind of like our wedding or anniversary celebration i got to celebrate and you and i are lucky because we live down here so but um but yeah uh other than that i I, i'll just record the rest of it on my own i was gonna Um, say (laughs) bye have a good weekend no i'm kidding i'm staying around i'm staying around she's, she's sticking around But anyways, before we move over to the second half of our episode, I do want to mention that this episode and every episode of the Mickey Bob podcast is brought to you by Mickey Travels. Mickey Travels is a nationally recognized leader in Disney vacation planning. They are diamond earmarked by Disney and their services are always 100% free. So reach out to Mickey Travels today for a free quote on your Disney vacation at MickeyTravels.com. That is MickeyTravels.com, making magic one vacation at a time. Um, and as we spoke about, and as Alyssa already alluded to, um, you know, if you're going to go through and make a travels agent, they're going to have all of this advice that we're giving to you. Um, probably honestly, better advice and more organized than the way Jared gives it. Uh, and they're going to tell you about amazing experiences, 
what restaurants they're going to recommend to you. I mean, we're talking expert advice and planning and booking and all of it at zero additional cost to you. It, it's a no brainer to go to a Mickey Travels agent rather than booking your own Disney trip. It, it's just, Agreed. It's, it's a no brainer. So Alyssa, let's talk more about specifics with things that couples can actually do. Um, and we're going to cover it all in this, on this next 30 minutes or so. But one of the things I wanted to talk about is I want to talk about the obvious stuff first, you know, the, the dinners couples should experience the, maybe the extra experiences and, and, um, you know, paid things that you can do. Like we talked about the horse drawn carriage and things like that. We'll talk about that. Um, but you know, I'm going to I'm going to challenge you here, Alyssa, to sort of think a little bit outside the box, because towards the end of these 30 minutes, um, I also want to talk about some more specific outside of the box things that you can do, places you can visit um, while well, Disney World, Disneyland, Disney Cruise Line that will make your trip a little bit more romantic um, and enjoyable as a couple. Um, because I have a few things in mind that I've already thought of. Um, and uh so yeah, that's that's it. I'm just gonna make. I'm just challenging you. That's all. Um. <laughs> I feel like pressure. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the first half kind of went smoothly. Now I'm like, okay, second half. Let me let me buckle up and pull the yellow strap and make sure yeah. I'm securely in this. Yeah, this is okay, very I'm, serious. I'm ready. I'm ready. All right. So let's start again. Let's start with the obvious stuff. So we'll give we'll give both of us more time to think about the outside of the <laughs> box right. stuff. Uh, but no, I mean, we do want to mention some restaurants that are naturally and extremely romantic, uh, you know, at Walt Disney World for, for starters, because that's what we are mostly focusing on. But, um, you know, if you're going to go to Walt Disney World and you want to have a special occasion dinner, a romantic evening with your partner, I know I can think of multiple that fit this but Alyssa, do you have anything specifically in mind i mean i think you and i are going to tag team a lot of them so i don't want to yeah. take them all right because i know we're yeah. gonna and i know which one i'm leaving for you because i know it's one of your favorites um <laughs> but i would tell you hands down i have seen more proposals at california grill than yeah. i've seen at any restaurant at on disney property um it's a beautiful restaurant it is, you know, overlooking Magic Kingdom. They pipe in the fireworks music. You watch it. I mean, it's, it literally oozes romance. Uh, more so than a family. Big, I, I've been there with my family many times, and it's wonderful. There's something so special about going with just a couple. Oh, mm -hmm. my God. So California Grill to me is just the epitome of a romantic dinner. Um, you know, again, if it seems like, oh, it's so expensive, it's worth it. You know, if you can mm. fit it in your budget, um, amazing. And the one thing I always like to remind people, just so they know this, is if you can't get that half hour, 45 minutes before the fireworks start, and you're like, darn it, I can only get like a 5.30 and the fireworks start at 8.30. What am I going to do? You can leave. Well, first of all, they'll never kick you out. You could literally drink coffee for two hours. But if you're like, no, I'm not doing that. Take, keep your receipt and you can leave. And you can come back at fireworks, show your receipt, and you can watch the fireworks from the, the, the walkway outside. So I always have to remind people that you can come back and watch that. Um, so I would say that's number one. Um, just another favorite of mine, um, as you mentioned, Jared, is Narcoosies. Um, always been a favorite of mine. Same thing. They lower the lighting. They pipe in the music from the fireworks. Um, they have reimagined that restaurant. Um, Jared, remind me, it's been almost a year, maybe, since they've reopened that? Not quite? Yeah, mm, roughly, I, I would say like nine or ten months yeah, since nine or we're ten months. currently it's recording. very coastal, which I love. So it's very bright, and it's very just inviting and fun. I love the colors. They're very, like, the, the aquas. And, again, it's just very, very coastal um, and great. And um, the food's amazing. So I'm I'm not going to steal all of them, but those are two, I would say, of my top choices for romantic dinners at Walt Disney World. Yeah. And uh, I just want to say right off the bat, completely agree with both of those. Um, to be honest with you, I don't think there is going to be, like, I'm going to name a few as well, but 
I just want to say that none of my options, in my opinion, are going to be able to top a uh, California grill from a from a special it's occasion or it's aesthetic. Be one. And it's yeah. not just about the food because there's restaurants that I believe serve up better food than California grill. I want to say that right now on the record. I'm not saying California grill has bad food. I just there's a few that I are that you I are personally throwing like. it down. I look, I'm just saying. Whoa, but, mic drop. Look, hey, okay, whoa, hold on, everyone. I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> it's I'm just a saying. <laughs> I know, I know. I got to get back on course. Hold on here. to your seats. <laughs> <laughs> look, and I, that was not that was not me saying California Girl has bad food. California Girl has. I know what you're saying. Food. There's there's some great food elsewhere, but as you were about to say. There's more than the food. Yeah. Oh, it's the atmosphere. I mean, you're yeah. sitting there being able to not just overlook Magic Kingdom in the distance. You got the monorail constantly going by. You got the boats going back and forth. You have fireworks you can view from outside on both sides of the coin. They the electric water the music, pageant. The electric water pageant. You can watch, you know, sun sunsets. You can watch sunrises because you got both sides of the coin. I mean, it's, it's it, I mean, it has it all. And it, it really, from an atmosphere perspective, I truly do not think could be beat. Uh, no. But, but again, like that's, that's just, you know, I, I won't, I won't rile up any California grill diehards. I promise. Uh, <laughs> But um, I want to say, Chad, we just lost fifty people. That we I know, I know. We just, everybody who loved California Grill is like, excuse me. Um, <laughs> They're but, boycotting Mickey Blog. Thanks, Chad. Hey, I know, I know. <laughs> there we go. You know, we love California Grill. We love it. Absolutely adore it. I just, um, you know, all I was trying to say is that I don't think that restaurant can can, can be beat from an atmosphere perspective, Absolutely. regardless of whether you think it's the best restaurant on property from a food perspective their food that is great. doesn't matter their food is still spectacular it's just Sometimes. the atmosphere is what puts it over the top and i um, agree narcusi's to me very similar um being that it is right there on the water grand floridian a gorgeous location um again i mentioned this earlier but topolino's terrace is a place that i find very special so um nice. it's extremely it's it's just the the same sort of very similar to California Grill and its atmosphere in regards to being able to have that rooftop, being able to go outside on the rooftop and see views of, you know, that entire area. It's it's gorgeous. It's it is extremely romantic and things it of that fun. nature. Um, a few other romantic dinners that I like to think of, um, in terms of location and and what you're getting out of it. Um, I I think uh, Flying Fish over on the boardwalk is a great location for having a more romantic evening. We've already spoken about, you know, the boardwalk in general. But I also think going over to a place like Animal Kingdom Lodge and enjoying a dinner at Chico is another really fantastic option. Um, and for me, regardless of all of this, uh, which I th I think Alyssa agrees. I'm not sure. Um, I, know where, I know where this is going, too. I wish I was a woman. <laughs> I loved yeah. it for you. I didn't yeah, want to see you. It did. You. you did. Um, to me, Le Cellier is my favorite restaurant in Walt Disney World. Uh, it's it's not even really all that close. Uh, part of it's sentimental. My family, uh, every single Disney trip, like that was our must do place. We always ate there. Um, but as I got older, I started celebrating more things like anniversaries with my with my girlfriend and wife and and uh you know things like that but you know even my parents came down this past fall and i had dinner with them there and it was fantastic again i've gone there with my brother on a double date with his girlfriend and and my wife like you know it's fantastic it's located in epcot talk about cozy Alyssa, uh it's about as cozy as it can get down there you're underneath the ground basically in a very dimly lit setting you just don't even know where you are it, it just you don't feel like you're in walt disney world you just no. feel like you're in like just a, a wine cellar in canada it's amazing it really is and, yeah. and i want to say also one of the things i love so and i i love la Salle just as much and funny thing about mm -hmm. it is let me say I'm not a meat eater, so probably yeah. doesn't make a ton of sense to a lot of people, right? Because they're known for their <laughs> their meats and their, you know their fillet and their. But I have to tell you, they have. Well, I don't eat this either because it has bacon in it. But the the uh, the cheddar cheese soup, 
I mean, they've had that for Incredible. years and years and years, but they're pretzel rolls, yum. And they, well, I have to say though, so Jared, I'm a little bit miffed at La Cellier. If I can, I hope uh -oh. somebody at La Cellier is listening because the last time I was there about a month ago, they took the Brussels sprouts off the menu. What the heck? I mean, I was about to literally get out there with a sign and just boycott the whole restaurant. <laughs> like literally just like walk around Epcot, you know. Um, they are aware that they might have made a mistake, <laughs> possibly by me and whatever. Um, but I Alyssa will say made it known to them. I made she was it known. unhappy. The food is absolutely fantastic. Um, and like you said, it is um it's just so nice and and cozy. Oh, but this is what I was gonna say. What I love so much about Le Cellier and the other restaurants around the World Showcase is they brought back the international cast members from the countries. And I, I don't know about you, Jared, but I'm sure you were at Le Cellier when the international cast members weren't there, um, probably right after COVID uh, and they reopened. <laughs> It, it was not the same as when you have a cast member who is your waiter or waitress and you see that they're from a province in Canada, you know, like even be in um, you know, I want to see what, part, what town in Italy you're from. I don't want to see that you're from like, you know, uh, Massapequa, New York. You know what I'm saying? I it's think true. It is a, I do. Th and I'm, but that's a positive thing. Cause they're, they're back. And I, yeah. I just, I sort of just didn't feel the vibe, even at La Cellier. No offense to the American cast members, but I needed the international cast members. Alyssa wanted her Brussels sprouts served from a Canadian, a Canadian who knows about the history of these Brussels sprouts themselves. That's all I'm saying. No, look, I, I get it. Um, another thing I wanted to mention while we're on the topic of romantic and, and couple oriented restaurants is Epcot is filled with several of them. Uh, yeah. If you are going to enjoy them in a park, um, a lot of the romantic setting dinners and, you know, special meals will be located at some of the fantastic Walt Disney world resorts, but, but that doesn't mean you can't experience it in a park. Um, at Magic Kingdom, Be Our Guest is probably your best bet when it comes to a more romantic evening. But at Epcot, there's several locations. For example, France has several very nice locations to enjoy a more romantic set setting dinner. Um, and also Italy. Italy, whether you are enjoying Via Napoli, but their other fine dining, Tutu Italia. Like these are these are locations that I think are very very authentic and enjoyable in the sense where you do feel like you're kind of transported to another place um like we were just talking about with La Cellier because one of the things that's interesting like we were talking about Alyssa is you were saying you feel like you're transported to another place how disorienting is it when you walk out of La Cellier after like two hours and you're, you're like, back um, into Epcot yeah. and there's tens of thousands of yeah. people everywhere and you're you like, smell Whoa. like caramel popcorn and yeah. yeah, I mean, and you hear kids screaming. I just want to say one other quick restaurant that I think is also, again, funny coming from me because I don't eat meat, but another very romantic restaurant is Yachtsman Steakhouse. Um, I did have to mention Yachtsman only because it is also what they call a signature dining location um, and definitely a place that is... I think rather romantic. You can get a really, really nice meal there. Um, and then lastly, Jared, um, just real quick, I know we're not going to put a ton of time into this, um, but I feel like we also have to mention maybe a couple of the restaurants over in Disney Springs um, that might be sort of considered, you know, like maybe a place for a romantic evening, such as the Boathouse or Paddlefish. I'll also tell you one of my absolute new favorite restaurants is Summer House. And while it's not fancy, I find it really, it can be a very romantic place to have a, a really nice dinner. No, I agree with that. It's it's very like, one of the things I like about Summer House a lot is how airy and open the atmosphere is. It's very, it's very pretty inside. You feel yeah. like you are in a very gorgeous setting. Um, Haleo is another great option if you want to split tapas and things of that nature. But I do want to mention the boathouse because I think the boathouse, especially when you're sitting outside 
um, when the weather's nice and you're sitting outside on that back deck, um, it doesn't get much better. You you got the water right there. I mean, it's a gorgeous setting. It really and is. And if you really want to take it to a different level, I know we're going to get, you can do the, um, the, I, Amphicar, Amphicar. <laughs> Amphicar, is that what they call it? Yeah, they, I, I think that's what they call it. Where you guys, after, you know, a couple after dinner could go in the car and it basically gets a car that goes in the water. I know people are like, if you haven't seen it, that doesn't sound right. And it takes <laughs> you all around the lagoon. And it actually can be quite romantic. It absolutely could. And, and I'm glad you also mentioned paddlefish because paddlefish is another spot that regardless of whether you're um, going to in, eat an entire meal there. One of the more romantic and enjoyable spots I like to hang out, which a lot of people aren't aware of. Um, so get ready, uh, take some notes here, kids. Um, is definitely enjoy the upstairs bar at Paddlefish. You mm. can walk up to that bar. If you walk up those stairs, you can go up there, have a drink, and sit on that patio, and you're overlooking all of Disney Springs from a rooftop. And you didn't make a reservation to eat to eat there. It's 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 one of the rare, like, still hidden gems, Alyssa. And honestly, I yep. probably just ruined it for myself because I don't know how many people I just told this about. Well, now uh, everybody's gonna go, and you're gonna be like, "Honey, we can't." I'm gonna go there evil. next time. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna go there next time, and my wife's gonna be like, "Well, this is your fault. You told them 100%. all." Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Speaking about outdoor bars, um, like you mentioned, the boathouse, and also summer house. Um, has a bar and an outdoor seating area. Um, and like you said, you know, Disney Springs at night can be just an extremely romantic place. I mean, it can get busy and crowded. Um, but once you sort of get out of the shopping district area and you get to some of those restaurant areas, um, it, you know, it kind of just becomes a little bit more, a little more intimate for sure. Yeah, 100%. Um, and again, another perk of, not to bring up Port Orleans again, but another perk of Port Orleans is having boat access. Because I think taking a boat ride, grabbing a drink, and heading back, walking the grounds of Port Orleans can be an extremely romantic evening. Absolutely. Um, a few, we're going to name a few outside, not outside of the box, but um, places that you can enjoy romantic settings at that might not be as romantic as the locations we mentioned, but are still worth a mention. I wanted to name a few um, right off the bat. I think going to the Polynesian, even if Ohana is not the most romantic dinner, it's still a gorgeous, gorgeous location. And as Alyssa was mentioning, Polynesian itself is a very romantic resort because you can walk around. There's that light Hawaiian music constantly playing. One of my favorite things to do, Alyssa, over the years has been just sitting on those chairs on the beach of the Polynesian, and you can watch the fireworks from right there, listen to the music, watch the boats go by. It's very, very pretty. The atmosphere is gorgeous. Um, you know, same sort of deal over at Grand Floridian. Even if you're not going to eat at Narcoosies, you can also enjoy places like Grand Floridian Cafe. Citricos is another really great restaurant that I think has become actually underrated over the years. Uh, over at Saratoga Springs, one of my most underrated restaurants in all of Walt Disney World is Turf Club. That's a restaurant I've always very much so enjoyed. The atmosphere is fantastic. It's it's low key. Again, you're right near the water. You can watch boats go by. It's it's just golf a great course. area. Yeah, right on the golf course as well. So those are a few that I wanted to name. And lastly, the last one that I wanted to sort of point out, um, I guess this fits into uh, you know, sort of towards the end when I talk about outside of the box things. But for me, another one is going over to Geyser Point over at uh, Wilderness Lodge. You might think, Jared, what are you talking about? It's a little like, you know, you know, basic lunch and dinner location. But Wilderness Lodge is right there on the water. Um, it's a fantastic setting. I mean, you feel like you're literally in this new world and it's wilderness oriented and it, it's just gorgeous. It's, it's a fantastic spot. Um, so yeah, wanted to mention a few of those. Do you have any other honorable mentions or any places you think that you'd want to mention? Well, now are we talking strictly food or are we kind of going outside of that? I would say you could go outside of it. It's totally well, fine. Okay, I'm going to go. All right, because I think we've sort of talked about the food, and those were great. Yeah, I think great, so. Also, honorable mentions. I think it's also important 
that we also remember a um, couple things that, and these, I'm just going to kind of shoot them off because I don't think yeah. we're spend, you know, a total, like a lot of time on each of them. Um, but, you know, there are a couple of resorts that have spas. And I think it's also really important to note that, you know, there's nothing more romantic than a couple's massage or, you know, some kind of, you know, spa therapy. That's really great for couples and certainly Grand Floridian, um, you know, would be a great, a great thing uh, to do there, obviously. Um, and then, of course, I know this is a little bit more niche and maybe doesn't apply to every, certainly a lot of people listening, is, you know, a Disney wedding, a Disney vow renewal, a prop as you mentioned, a Disney proposal, um, you know, all of those really, really romantic things or, you know, um, just things that, and I know this is like also a little, you know, strange, but like, you know, maybe it's like, oh, I'm not getting married there, but you could renew your vows and it wouldn't be the expense of, you know, a whole wedding. It could be very, you know, just sort of intimate. Um, like you said, Jared, a proposal, you got help with from Disney. Um, so again, while that doesn't really apply to all of our listeners and viewers, um, Disney is a place that that happens on a daily basis. Uh, I mean, how many people have you seen on Main Street in Magic Kingdom get down on one knee? I mean, it's almost you know, daily. you know, almost every single day I'm at Magic Kingdom, I see that. But I will also say this: it doesn't get old, though, Jared. Does it? It doesn't get old. But I will say this too: sometimes I fear and think about how many just really cute, adorable proposal photos, and there's just sweaty <laughs> hat running to the next thing to take a photo jared in the background of that photo hopefully not too many some well, they can, sure they can, what do you call it uh what do erase you me yeah uh, they can photoshop say, me like, out. you know yeah photoshop jack who they'll be like who's the guy in the hat with yeah, the with the, the phone oh guy? just get him out of there or they'll go on a page and say can anyone get this guy with the hat <laughs> out of this picture um but no but all joking aside um th those are all romantic things and I know, Jared, you also, I know our time is limited, but you also wanted to mention about like dessert parties and fireworks mm -hmm. cruises and things yeah. like that. No, I mean, one thing I will mention um, first off is horse-drawn carriages are something wow. Disney offers, and I think they are so wow. well done. Yeah. I was able to experience one with my wife um, yeah. at Port Orleans, and they take you from Riverside. You walk up, you, the, the carriage um you know guy is right there waiting for you they make it like out of a fairy tale they bring you all the way down to french quarter and back you're right alongside that river at the end you take photos with the horse and i have a very adorable photo of my wife um smiling because the horse is like trained to like put its head right on your shoulder uh so there's a photo of her with the the horse like literally oh, head wait, on her man, shoulder. i think obi agrees when you brought up the horses I think Obi uh, agrees that that's a great, yeah. great thing to do for couples. Yeah. Uh, I just want to mention apologies if you hear my dog in the background. Oh, good. This is a, this is like, this is, <laughs> makes us feel. But I think, I think our viewers will just have to know that your dog, Obi, agrees. I think he, he heard horse drawn carriage and he's like, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Obi's actually our third host. Uh, doesn't make a lot of appearances, but when this he does. Wild. He's gonna. He's gonna. But he's he's green. He's so green. You know, when I he think barks in the distance, he's, he's green. Yes. <laughs> no. Uh. I. But yeah. I. It's on the same topic. Um. You know. There's also things such as firework uh, boat cruises you can enjoy. Um. You can enjoy dessert parties that are fantastic as well. I mean, these are very very amazing things. Uh. Another right thing pontoon boats. Yeah. And just, and by the way, can I also say this? This is also another thing. I know you've seen this too, Jared. When we've gone to Epcot and seen, well, Illuminations or Lumi Harmonious or Lumis, whatever it turns out to be throughout that year, um, the, the, let's say for right now, the Luminous dessert of, uh, you know, not dessert, the Luminous fireworks cruise, you can have those boats decorated for an mm -hmm. anniversary, for a proposal. Now, of course, you can do birthday and all that, but let's just say you just got engaged and you're staying there a few extra days or it's an anniversary. Maybe, mm -hmm. you know, you surprise your wife with, you know, just a just the two of you going out 
to see a, on a luminous on a luminous fireworks cruise and you have it decorated with happy anniversary. Look, I, I mean, it. Disney, when we say, when we tell you that like Disney is prepared for these things and Disney is trained for this, like we, we couldn't be more honest about that. Yeah. One of the things that was amazing about um, when I, when I proposed, for example, um, Disney helped us get flowers up to the room um, which you can order those uh, through Disney directly. They'll they'll help you out, have flowers in your room and everything like that. But also as simple as, okay, my fiance is going to be arriving to the gate. Um, you know, can you just tell her, like, don't, don't, don't confuse her. Don't lead her any direction. Like just say, Oh yeah, sure. Welcome. Right. Happy, exactly. Happy anniversary. Cause she thought it was an anniversary trip. And I also had family members on the room that if they said, Oh, you're here with this party, it could have completely revealed the Jared, surprise. I imagine how nervous you were. Yeah. Uh, we I'm won't get into to those like, details. Kind of just, <laughs> I'm trying to picture what that was like while you were waiting for her and how nervous you were. Basically picture someone on the verge of fainting uh, for an <laughs> extended period of time. And there that was me. Uh, now, but we got I through mean, it. It's so true though. Um, and I, Jared, I'll let you obviously finish it up. But I think the purpose of, of this part of the series is I think there's a lot of people who think Disney is not a place for romance. Disney mm -hmm. is not a place for couples. It's for little kids and families and things like that and it's obviously we're going to go through we've already done disney for adults we've done that we're finishing up disney for couples we're going to talk about disney for families of we're going to talk about disney solo um yeah. i think jared we have a you know we have others that we want to you know kind of talk about but the point is is that it makes sense for lots of different demographics of people um and I think that just by showing where to stay, what to do, where you could eat, um, just hopefully these ideas, as you said, Jared, they're not the be all and end all, but there there's some ideas that hopefully someone will say, I never thought of that. You know what? I'd love to celebrate my anniversary in Disney. I'd Absolutely. love to, I'd love to go with my, I'd love to surprise my wife or my husband and do a trip solo. Even if it's for a long weekend. And and remember too, if you are you know a few adults going on an upcoming Disney trip, and you have kids and things like that, there are there are programs and things you can get set up with, in terms of you know being able to have somebody watch your kids. But mm -hmm. even if you're able to escape for a few hours, we do hope we gave you some ideas on places you can go, things you can do, because it's this isn't just a a show and an episode for Disney for couples. If you're going for a week-long trip as a couple like no i understand the, the vast demographic of people going to walt disney world are families um and if you have if you have someone watching your kids for a night then hopefully you can go partake in one of these amazing things Jared, to go enjoy let me just ask you so our viewers are not confused are you volunteering to watch somebody's children for a night when they come to Walt Disney World, since you're local, yeah, I just want to say because I just, as a listener, it's a great I might offer. Have taken it that, I might have taken it that way, and I just want to clear the air to make sure that you don't get like emails and messages that people are saying, "Okay, Jared, I'll take you up on it." Yeah, as long as you go to one of the places that I suggested, then yes. Um, oh, okay. All right, guys, you heard it here. Sorry, that's my only Everybody rule. Will watch your children, <laughs> so you can have a romantic night. In Walt Disney World. Yeah. And thank you, and Jared, for that for that offering. This is what I'm here for. I'm just a volunteer awesome. Disney babysitter. Who knew that we um, had so much to offer? <laughs> no, but truly, thank you so much to everybody who listened and watched this episode. Um, we really appreciate the support yet again. Uh, we drop new episodes of the Make It Bod podcast every single Friday. You can watch all of our episodes on YouTube or you can listen to them on Apple, on Spotify, on wherever you get podcasts. We're on multiple different platforms. We always appreciate the support. If you want to learn and, you know, read more about Mickey Blog itself, of course, head over to MickeyBlog.com to stay up to date with all things Disney. 
You can follow all things Disney over there because we cover all things Disney over there 24-7, 365. Um, on top of that, you can follow Mickey Blog on social media. We're on multiple different social media platforms as well. Um, and beyond that, we can't wait to see you next week on another edition of the Mickey Bot Podcast. So thank you so much for tuning in and have a magical rest of your day. <laughs>